Okay, so today I'm talking about my relapse after Accutane, which is super weird for me because I never ever thought that I'd be talking about this. Like I thought Accutane was going to be my final solution, like my one shot, you know, like, oh, I'm gonna take Accutane and then it's all gonna go away forever and I'll never have to worry about it ever again. Which for me personally wasn't true, like a lot of people do take it and they never get a pimple ever again, but um, for a good portion of people I feel like you take it and then you stay clear for a while, but then it comes back. So yeah, this isn't something that I thought that I'd be talking about, I really did think that Accutane was going to be like it for me. And I am still positive about, you know, this whole thing being a journey, so I'm not too worried about it. But anyways, since I took Accutane, which you guys know, I took 60 milligrams for six months and then I stayed completely clear, like not even a whitehead for a year. Um, and probably about, oh, I don't know, four months ago, I started getting cysts again, four or five months ago. And it started with one right here and then one right here and here and then one right here. And it wasn't like, a little pimple or anything like they were cysts like full-on raging cysts like just like before just as painful as before and this one actually did scar which is kind of crazy even though I didn't touch it doesn't matter for me even if I don't touch it I still get scars so whatever bye Felicia um but yeah I started bringing out a cyst again and I had no clue what to do I went to my dermatologist and I talked to her and the only thing that she offered me was basically a prescription cream and said, um, you know, you could do Accutane again for a second time in like a month if you want to get on the waiting list. And I already knew that wasn't something that I wanted to do. I, just because like, if it didn't work once for me, why would it work a second time? You know what I mean? And like, do I really want to put my body through that again? Because it was kind of a hassle the first time. Not just a hassle, but... It's definitely like a more intense drug, like I don't think it should be being thrown around there as like, oh, just just do this, just take this. So I definitely knew I wanted to try something more natural, um, and I asked her, you know, I've heard from a lot of people, if you cut out dairy, that that could help a lot, especially if it's like hormonal acne because it creates a hormonal imbalance. And she was like, no, 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 don't change your diet at all, you don't need to change your diet, like, don't even worry about it, just eat whatever. And I was like, mmm, mmm, girl. Are you sure? Because that does not sound right. Like, I don't think that's right at all. I don't think you can just eat whatever. So, shortly after that, I decided that I was going to stop eating dairy. And a lot of people had told me, you know, to cut it out. But I think that just like being stuck in my own ways and also I didn't want to be told <laughs> by someone else, like, what to do. I don't know. Not like a pride thing, but just... I think I just didn't want to change and I felt like it was going to be too difficult or too expensive, which it's not at all. Um, it's hard at first because you have to learn how to make you know, certain things without dairy or just get used to not buying certain foods, but it's definitely doable um, and I've been doing it for however long now, four or five months. and. I felt great like as soon as I cut it out. I had way more energy. I felt like I had more stamina too. Like before I could only run for like a mile and now I can go for like three or four miles. And it's just like crazy like the change it definitely had on like my body and kind of like my mindset. I don't know, that sounds kind of hippie-ish, but you get what I'm saying. Um, so I cut out dairy and that really, really, really did help me a lot. So I definitely think that um, if you, cut out dairy, I would be surprised like if you didn't see results just, it, but that's just if you have like a hormonal issue, if your acne is a hormonal issue because the hormonal imbalance like creates that. And as far as like other foods go, like eggs now, I only buy organic because if you think about it, the ones that aren't organic, they're injecting the chickens with hormones and then those hormones end up in your eggs. So if you're not going organic with like your produce and like poultry and that sort of thing, then you're basically getting the same thing as eating dairy because you're still getting like the hormones which are going to cause a hormonal imbalance, which I didn't think about at all at first. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to cut out dairy and that's what I started with. And then I started thinking about other stuff and that's when I was like, okay, well, 
now that I feel better and I feel more energized, I wonder, like, because I used to have be achy, like, all the time. Like, I'd always feel tired and crampy and, like, just exhausted all the time. And I had no clue why. And so I started looking into, like, other foods and things that have to do with that. And I was like, okay, maybe I have, like, inflammation, like, inflammation of the body. Um, which is actual thing, like chronic inflammation is basically when your system goes haywire. And I'm like pretty sure that's like what I have because it's literally tiredness, achiness, and surprise, acne are the three symptoms. Um, so I started looking at foods that were anti-inflammatory and um, basically like there's a whole bunch of foods. I mean there's foods that are inflammatory and then foods are that are anti-inflammatory and so I start focusing on foods that fight inflammation and like like I said there's a whole bunch of foods different spices herbs um, turmeric is a really good one for inflammation not only can you ingest it but you can use it on your face too like as a face mask um, ginger is really good and it's also good you know for your stomach to help with like digestion or like if you're having any stomach issues um, uh, chia seeds, is it chia or cha? I think it's chia. Chia seeds, and those are really good as well because they have omega-3 in them, which is really good for acne sufferers because it's hard to get a good balance of like omega-3, omega-6 fats. Um, sorry if this is going like, I don't know where this is going. But, so basically what I've been eating, so I went low inflammation diet and after that, so this has all been a process. I didn't just wake up one day and go, oh, I'm gonna cut out everything. It's slowly been like deciding which foods affect me and which foods don't, which foods make me feel good and which foods don't. So it's definitely been a journey for sure. You don't just like wake up and you're like, I'm gonna cut out everything. <laughs> um, so don't feel discouraged. Just take it like, you know, take it slow and see how your body reacts to certain things. So now what I've been doing, um, as I said last time on my live, or Instagram live, is a low GI diet, and GI is the glycemic index. So the difference between low and high GI, if something is high on the glycemic index, then it's going to spike your blood sugar levels, and that will cause like a hyperinsulin response, and that response can cause either a hormonal imbalance or inflammation, which both are going to cause acne, or they both can cause acne if that's an issue for you. But with a low inflammation diet, these foods are going to keep your blood sugar level stable so you won't have that hyperinsulin response and you'll feel like energized throughout the day. You won't have those dips like that, you know, two o'clock feeling or whatever throughout the day. Um, you're just going to, you're going to feel way better and your skin's going to Show that you feel way better. I mean, I have like no makeup on at all right now, which is like insane because I feel like before I even cut dairy out, my face would be like more red because um, of the inflammation. But yeah, definitely since I've started eating low inflammation foods, it has helped me so, 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 so much. And I'm not gonna lie, it has been like a little bit more pricey and harder for me because. I didn't learn about just like the different recipes of these foods like basically learning about different recipes and learning about different foods and learning just constantly keep <laughs> learning has been hard you know to find time I feel like that's the biggest thing is like to find time to do all of this um, but I've been pushing myself and I feel like it's definitely helping and it's definitely something that I would try and so most of the things that I eat, if you're wondering what low inflammation entails, basically no refined carbs, so no white bread, no rice, no like junk food that has no nutritional value for you, that's just fillers. It's not going to actually like give you the nutrients that you need, that your body needs to run off of. It's not fuel, it's literally just like air. It's just chemicals that you're putting in your body. So none of that, and then no fried foods really, because that's not really good for you either. 
Um, and then anything that's like gonna be super processed, no like creamer, or hot dogs, um, <laughs> which is funny, but I don't know why I said hot dogs. Um, but yeah, and then like very, very, very little sugar because sugar also is going to spike your blood sugar level. I eat like almost no sugar, like maybe 10 grams a day, maybe. And like the max you're supposed to have a day anyways is like almost 30, I think, um, 30 something. And that's kind of crazy because some energy drinks and some like pops and stuff have like 70 grams in them. So I don't know, I don't know what's going on there. But anyways, low GI has helped me so much. Um, since I started doing that, I like, I don't feel, before I could like literally tell my body, like I'd get this feeling in my stomach and then on my face would hurt. And then I would get like an itchy feeling on my face and then I would have a cyst. Or like, you know what I mean by like an itchy feeling. Mine would like tingle, like I could tell that I was gonna get a spot. Um, but I have not gotten that since, which is crazy. I mean, because it was coming back, it was like, I had five cysts at one time when I stayed completely clear for a year, so I know it was coming back. It was just a matter of time and figuring out what worked, which I'm glad that I've been able to, through trial and error, figure out what works for me. And again, this isn't going to work for everybody. I'm not saying that this is like a cure-all, but it has definitely helped me, and I think that it is worth giving a shot. And if you don't think that, you can do anything else. Like, if you don't think you could afford that, at least try cutting out dairy, because that, I promise you, will make a huge difference. Even if it doesn't make a difference in your skin, it will make a difference in your energy levels and just how you feel cutting out dairy. Do it. It's good. It'll help. Um, so yeah, I just talked like crap done. So I made a list of things that I've been eating, if you guys are interested, because um, I get asked a lot, like, what do you eat for breakfast, what do you eat for lunch, what do you eat for dinner, whatever. Um, so basically for breakfast, I've realized that my body thrives off of, like, fats and protein. So I usually eat, like, an egg or two for breakfast, and then I might have um, some avocado, which is really good fat and I might have um, some cauliflower, like, and I'll, you know, mix it all together or whatever. Um, and then sometimes if I am like craving carbs, uh, I have Ezekiel bread, and I don't know if you guys know what that is, but you can find it in like the frozen section, but it has like a ton of grains in it and it's actually really good for you. So Ezekiel bread with toast and maybe like an egg or something. And I always have a matcha latte, like almost every single morning now I drink matcha. It's like, it's amazing, it's so good. Um, and matcha is basically, if you guys don't know, it's green tea leaves, like ground up. Um, they make it in Japan. I think they make it in China as well, but I buy the Japan version because I heard the China version can have lead in it. I don't know, just what I heard. Um, but matcha has 10 times like the benefits and antioxidants that green tea has. And it also has like a special antioxidant in it that no other food has. So, yes, it's good. Um, and that's supposed to help with like balancing your hormones and all that stuff as well. So other foods I've been eating that are like foods that you like can buy very easily. Um, beans, beans are really good source of protein. Um, extra virgin olive oil, eggs, which now I buy organic, like I said, because before I wasn't thinking about it, I was just going and buying like, you know, the regular white egg. Then I was talking to someone, they're like, yeah, but like, if they put hormones in the chicken, don't the hormones end up in the egg? And I'm like, oh my God, you're totally right. And then I switched to organic eggs and I stopped breaking out again. So, organic eggs are fine for me. Some people, they cause, they can cause inflammation, but other people, they help. So I think for me, my body personally, it's fine. Um, garlic, rosemary. Uh, I started trying like different bone broths, which are really good for your skin. Um, obviously any like green leafy vegetable, like the darker green color, I feel like the more nutrients it has. So I eat a lot of kale and I eat a lot of spinach. Um, and then bok choy, celery, broccoli, blueberries. And I think I said this last time to you guys, but I don't eat a lot of fruit. I do eat a little bit of fruit, but not a lot. Um, I think that 
for my body personally, I don't need a lot of sugar, like at all. And like even, I think I said this last time, but I thought I was being healthy by having a smoothie every morning. And then I checked everything I was putting in it, even though it's natural sugar, I was having about 70 grams of sugar every single morning in my smoothie. And I thought I was being healthy and that's terrible. <laughs> And then so by two or three o'clock every single day I was crashing and have to, having to take a nap like every single day. And I just felt miserable all the time. I didn't know why because obviously I'm eating fruit I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm healthy, but no. So I eat low GI fruits. Those are the only fruits I eat. So blueberries, strawberries don't bother me. There are low GI fruits that I do still eat. Um, I eat salmon a lot. So like fatty fish is like really good, especially if it has omega-3. Walnuts are super good. Um, coconut oil is good for balancing hormones. Even though I think a study just came out saying that like coconut oil isn't good or like it's not what we thought it was. I feel like that's different depending on again like your body. Um, my body really responds well to it and I feel really good when I eat it. So I'm going to continue to eat it. I've been eating it for a long time. So yeah, it's honeydew. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so I am gonna keep eating coconut oil. Um, but yeah, honeydew is another one that I eat, another fruit that I eat, and that only has 10 grams of sugar, 10 or 11 per serving, so that's pretty low too. Um, turmeric is really good, I think I said earlier, for inflammation, and then cinnamon, so these are different spices that I use. Cinnamon, um, I usually will put in my matcha, or I might put in my, um, oatmeal, because it is really good, um, for stabilizing your blood sugar levels throughout the day. Uh, ginger, and then again, like any whole grain fiber, like something that's not going to be like a processed refined carb, so like whatever, whole grain bread, oats, um, and obviously green tea, matcha. That is literally, I feel like I just talked forever. That is all that I have to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is what I've been doing since Accutane. I don't want to say it didn't work because it did work, but I definitely started to relapse after. So like it did start to come back. And again, that's like not something that I ever thought I would have to think about again or that I ever thought that would happen. So just be aware, I guess, <laughs> that it can happen. Going through the cut out dairy my acne lessons as well it's true I thought it was a myth but it's true I stopped drinking milk but I'm such a cheese lover I don't know how to give up girl just do it just give it up just don't even think about it say bye bye also they have fake cheese uh, Adea is the brand that I use and at first it tastes like plastic but then after a while you get used to it and you like that plasticky taste because yeah I mean that's like the only cheese I use and it's pretty good and I honestly don't even think about it anymore. Like at first, I, probably like the first two weeks, I was like craving it. I was like, I want mac and cheese. I want fettuccine alfredo. I want pizza. I want mozzarella sticks. Now, like, that all sounds terrible to me. That all sounds disgusting. Um, Accutane can cause hair loss. And some people, I've heard it as, it, as a side effect. And permanent or temporary, either or. Um, I've heard of both. <laughs> I actually did get a little bit hair loss after Accutane. Um, I didn't have any during while I was on it, but after probably like for a couple months, like three or four months. I have never tried Juice Plus Berry Capsules. And then again, yeah, honeydew. Um, one thing I was looking into trying though, which I don't know if any of you guys have tried or not, is um, like collagen, collagen peptides are supposed to be really good for you. I've been looking into that and I've even read some things that like, it's supposed to like help you like look younger or like stay younger, which I don't really care about, whatever. But um, it said something about like, it could help with like skin texture or scarring. Somebody even said like it made all their scars go away, which I don't know about that, but I was thinking about trying it. So if you guys know a good brand, of collagen peptides, holla at me, I'm here to listen. People like all relapse for different reasons, like, did I 
say this? I don't know. So like it could be hormones. Like some people take it when they're a kid or younger and then you get older and since your hormones change, like you could start breaking out again. I've heard of that happening. I've heard of it being like a boy girl thing. Um, like girls have more of a chance than, of relapsing than guys. I've heard of if you don't take um, a certain dosage, like kilograms per body fat ratio, that you have a higher chance of relapsing. There's just so many variables. And then for some people, like it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work and they have to do something else, which I feel like is slightly my case, slightly hormonal um, because it is this lower half of the face. Like I said, like this has like always stayed completely clear. Always. Oh, happened to me and turned out it was allergies. Yeah, that's like another thing too. Um, finding out which foods I'm like, I found out like f different foods that I'm sensitive to will like hurt my stomach and like make my nose itch and make my face itch. It's like you could have a food allergy and not even know it. Um, three rounds of Accutane, I still have breakouts, ugh. Yeah. That's why I'm not going back on it a second time because I feel like I know my body and I feel like it would just, it would be too much for me to go through it again and then still break out again because then I would just be like, well, what do I do now? You know what I mean? So I'm just, I'm content with my progress and where I am. Yeah, I've heard of using maca powder um, and like different aptogens. I've been looking into that. Um, there was another one, like Ashwanda, I don't know if I pronounced that right, that I was looking into as well. I feel like it's crazy because you kind of get like trapped in Accutane because it's like one thing that you know that works and it's hard to kind of risk more scarring and more acne to go through like a bunch of different things to figure out what works for you. Like I'm surprised I found what works for me like so quickly um, with changing my diet and basically working out like way more like a lot of cardio is what I do um, but I feel like it's kind of like a comfort thing like it's something that you know is going to work and I know someone who's done it like what was it like four times and it keeps coming back like every time she'll be off of it for like two months and it'll come back like completely so I mean, as you know that it works, but you know that it's also gonna come back for some people, so I don't know. And another thing which I thought was weird that as soon as I changed my diet and like started exercising more before, well, after Accutane, I still worked out, I still exercised, not as much as I do now, but no matter how hard I pushed myself, I talked to someone else and she said this too, I wouldn't sweat. Like my face would not sweat. It would get like really hot and really red, but it wouldn't sweat and it'd make me so mad. And I would keep like trying to push myself to get my face to sweat and it would not sweat. And just recently it started sweating again. And I'm like, thank God, I'm normal again. Meditation, just water helps tons. Sounds crazy, but your mood has something to do. I definitely think that your mood and like your mindset has something to do with it too. I think that's why exercise helps me because it puts me like in a good mood, you know, like the endorphins. Um, and also like, just like stress. Like a lot of people don't realize how much stress you go through. Not even like, I don't, not even like big stressors, but like little everyday things. Like, I don't know, like sitting in traffic for an hour at your store or like trying to find your way through a new city. I don't know, like there's so many like little things I feel like that add up like environmental stressors that like we don't think about every day. But yeah, I mean, water, of course, always water. Um, and speaking of stress, that's like, whoa, that's like one thing I have definitely been trying to cut back on. Like I technically, I have, I have like two jobs and one side job, so I technically have three jobs. Um, but I just, I don't know, I started like thinking about stuff and started reevaluating my life. And I'm like, why do I work all these jobs to basically be stressed out all the time to buy stuff that either only temporarily makes me happy or like I don't even really care about? So I did quit one of my jobs like this week. <laughs> like, 
tomorrow's my last day. Um, and then, so I'll just have one full-time job and one side job. And I feel like that's going to make like a huge difference. Like I feel like stress is such a huge thing that we don't think about. Even though like you're young and I don't know, my parents are always like, oh, you're young, you can do it. Oh, you're young, like you can do this, you, you're young. But I don't know, you also have to just like take a second and step back and be like, whoa, dude. Uh, what am I doing this for? Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Like, definitely take time to de-stress and to just think about your life. I don't know. And, like, your goals and stuff. I don't know. Is that weird? <laughs> yeah, we definitely stress way more than people used to. Like, back in the day, it was, I feel like it was easy. Especially without, like technology and social media and standards and trying to live up to expectations and always 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 having like a presence online you feel like you have to be I don't know like you always have to be like perfect or good or yes we definitely put a lot more stress on ourselves we have to like work more because things cost more but we also have the pressure to like go to school and graduate university and do this and do that and back in the day I feel like it was literally just like people were cool with whatever like you just graduated high school and then you just moved on with your life and then most people like didn't go to school or they just like had kids and had a family and that was fine I feel like now people don't think like you can't just be fine like everyone always is like it's not a bad thing to like keep wanting more but like when is enough enough you know what I mean and like why put so much value and emphasis on monetary goods you know yeah we definitely need to stress less like 100% I think that we need to stress less sorry this like totally turned into something else but I I don't know I don't have anything else to say about my diet that's just what I've been doing and that's what's been working for me and <laughs> so if you guys have like any other questions about it make sure that you let me know so I can answer um I tried Banish for the first time. The pumpkin mask, so far it's amazing. Do I use everything? I do use everything. Um, I use the, the pumpkin mask is my favorite, like hands down. I love the pumpkin mask. It makes your skin like so soft and it smells so freaking good. I love the pumpkin mask. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Should I say it one more time? I love it. Um, so I use the pumpkin mask. I think I just made a post about this, but I use the pumpkin mask like once a week or once every two weeks and then the charcoal mask less than that for like once every two to three weeks and I mix that with the Aztec Indian clay mask, the Benetite clay, which you can get off Amazon and I mix that also with apple cider vinegar and I really really like the consistency of that and that is like a deep cleaning mask. That's why I only feel like I need that one like two to three times, you know, a month or wait, two to three times a month. Like every two to three weeks is what I meant. Um, and then I use the vitamin C serum only after I roll. And they don't make it anymore, which I hope they bring it back. But I use the vitamin C cream like every single night. I use the vitamin C cream. And then the beauty elixir I use as a setting spray after I do my makeup. And the pore smasher I use mostly after I work out. But I make sure to wash it in between every time. So I'm not getting like smearing like sweat and germs everywhere. You know what I mean? Um, but I do use everything, 100%. Me telling you about my journey and just like what I've been eating will give you some insight and maybe you're like, hey, I feel that way too and like I should try this too. Um, if not, sorry I wasted your time. <laughs> I feel like I say that every time, but I'm not really sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Um, do I drink apple cider vinegar? My skin looks good. Is it okay to ask if it's bare covered? Yeah, I'm not wearing any makeup right now. Um, thank you for saying it looks good. Not wearing any makeup. I do have a spot right here, and that was because I ate some stuff I is not on my diet plan. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've drank apple cider vinegar before. I think it's okay. I prefer kombucha because it has like the live and active cultures in it. Um, and I'm actually making my own kombucha because it's expensive and making your own is cheaper and it's kind of fun. So yeah, that's what I've been doing. I can show you. Yeah. So 
So this is a green tea mix. My sister actually gave this like jar and everything and showed me how to do this. And this thing at top is called a scoby. It looks kind of gross, but that's like the live and active cultures. And so you brew it for like two weeks and then you have to like strain it and add whatever you want in it. So I usually put like lemon and ginger in mine. Um, but yeah, you can smell it, it smells kind of vinegary. But yeah, I like kombucha um, instead of apple cider vinegar. And this will help like uh, with your stomach, it'll help with like good, like putting good bacteria in your body. It basically does the same thing as like eating a yogurt is a good way to think about it. Oh yeah, I said I got this because I went off my diet. Um, which is like, don't beat yourself up. Like if you go off your diet, just like know your body and know that like, for me, I, like I was like, oh, I'll probably break out. But it was a time where I went out with my friends and I didn't really have very many options. You know what I mean? Like, so don't beat yourself up about it. Just continue back into your plan the next day. Like it's fine, we're human, stuff happens. Just go right back into it. It's fine, don't skip a beat. All right guys, and that is all I got for today. So thank you, and if you wanna check out my Instagram or my progress or anything like that, it's my face story, and I will talk to you guys next time. All right, bye. She just wants to be beautiful. She goes unnoticed, she knows no limits. She